If you're a tarp enthusiast, then you already know that the ridge line is the backbone and guide lines are the appendages of the structure. Guide lines are tension lines or cables designed to add stability to any freestanding structure. And in this video, I'm going to show you several different ways to set up your guide lines so you can enjoy your tarp in maximum comfort. There are a lot of different varieties of cordage that you can choose when setting up your ridge or guy lines, and some are better than others, but ultimately it comes down to personal preference. Traditionalists and reenactors typically use natural fibers. Survivalists and preppers tend to favor paracord. I've seen ultralight hikers use mason's line, and many in the hammock community use lashet or zingit. After using a variety of different kinds of line, my preference is zingit because it's lightweight, strong, it is not slippery so it easily holds friction hitches, and it has little stretch under tension. One of the most common ways to attach your line to a tie-out or grommet is by using a bowline hitch. Feed your line into the tie-out, then form a loop in the standing part of the line with the working part on top. Now feed the working end through the back of the loop, behind and around the standing line, and back through the loop once more, and then tighten. Or, instead of attaching your line directly to your tie-outs, you can tie a loop onto one end of your guy lines and either girth hitch it onto the tie out or use a small carabiner for quick attachment and detachment. In a previous video, I showed how to tie off your guy lines to your stakes, but in case you didn't see it, here's a quick recap. A round turn and two slippery half hitches, a marlin spike hitch, and a clove hitch are three great knots that will do the trick. Now that we know how to attach our guy lines and tie off our stakes, Let's take a look at how we can add tension to our lines using a variety of different hitches. Let's start this out with one of the most used knots to add tension to a line, a trucker's hitch. This knot is great because you can add it anywhere along the line that is needed. It begins with a figure of eight loop. The working part of the line is looped around a stake or object and fed back to and through a loop. Tension is added to the line, add a couple of twists, and it's locked in place by either two half or slippery half hitches. Instead of tying a figure of eight loop, I use a variation of a marlin spike hitch. Instead of feeding a bite from the standing part, I feed it from the working end. The loop will slide a bit until it is secure, but it will work fine for light loads, and the knot comes apart with a slight tug. If you have enough line, then don't even bother tying a loop. Just feed the line back to the grommet and finish it off with two slippery half hitches. The second method is using a friction hitch, known as the taut line hitch. To tie this, we wrap the working end around the standing line twice, taking two turns, towards the inside of the loop that we are creating, and then cross the working end over the turns in the standing line, and finish it off with a half hitch. If you want to quickly untie this later, use the slippery half hitch to finish it off. Now, here's a variation of a mooring hitch, known as the Faramond friction hitch. Form a loop with the working part, keeping the working end on the bottom of the loop. Take the loop and wrap it over and around the standing line inside of itself two or three times, attaching the loop to the line like a Prusik knot. Then form a bite from the working end and feed it into the loop. Tighten the knot and adjust it along the guy line to add the desired tension. When you're ready to untie this hitch, just grab the working end and pull. Here's a trick using a Prusik knot. Attach it to your guy line then girth hitch it or tie it on to the corners of your tarp. Now you can adjust the tension of your guy lines from the inside of your shelter. So, now that you know how to tie all of these knots, let's take a look at some hardware that can easily replace much of what I've just covered. Keep in mind, you can only carry so much, every ounce counts, and having the knowledge of how to tie these knots can only be beneficial if the hardware is not available. Tent line tighteners or tensioners are common and come with most tents. They're usually plastic, have three holes that line can be woven through, and are tied off in the third hole. Currently several companies are designing these in a variety of materials and configurations. The purpose of this piece of equipment is to work like an adjustable friction hitch. It slides along the guy line, adding tension to the line. Now, the next three pieces of equipment all work like a trucker's hitch, giving you a leverage point to add tension and a locking point to secure the line. Night Eyes make some great products that can be found in any outdoor store. The Night Eyes Figure 9 is one of those products that can make your guy line and ridge line set up a breeze. They come in a variety of different sizes and two different styles, a standard Figure 9 and a carabiner version. They are great for securing and adding tension to a line, but they should not be used for climbing. Both versions can be attached anywhere along your line. 
On the standard version, feed a bite of the line through the eye, pull it over the hardware, and then tighten the line to secure it into place. For the carabiner version, start out the same way, feeding a bite through the eye and around the hardware, and take the standing line and wrap it at least once over and through the gate. Now you can wrap your line around an object and back to the hook system. The first hook is designed so you can add tension, and the second hook locks the line into place. If you need to add tension between two different lines, try their loop method. On the standard version, feed the working end through the eye hole, around the hardware, and under the line, like a half hitch. For the carabiner, just tie a strong loop knot such as the figure of eight at the end of the line and then clip it into place. For both versions, attach the secondary line to the hook system as you would have done before. Night Eyes is a great company, but I'm a huge fan of Dutchware and all of its cool gear. The next two pieces of equipment are constants on my tarp setup, the Dutch Wasp and Fleas. I primarily use the Wasp for my ridge line and the Fleas on my guy lines, but the Wasp can serve either purpose being that it is designed to be placed anywhere along a line and locked into place by hitching a bite over the tip of the tail. The fleas themselves aren't as flexible in line positioning as the wasp, but when they are spliced into a loop, the possibilities are endless. Both are made out of titanium, making them strong and lightweight. The wasp weighs a total of 2 grams, and the fleas weigh in less than a gram. Both are designed to be used with 1.75 mm line. The tension locking system is similar to the figure of 9. The head allows you to add tension to the line like a 3 to 1 pulley, and the line can be locked into place under the wings. When the weather is nice, why not open up your tarp's porch and enjoy it? Use either your trekking poles or find the right size staves in the woods. A marlin spike hitch or a clove hitch are great ways to attach a pole to your guy lines. I prefer the clove hitch because it holds onto the poles much better, plus it works as a great anchoring knot for ridge lines. I like keeping my line neat and tangle free for when I need it, so here's a tip how you can do this. Start out by looping one end of your line around your thumb, then wrap the line in a figure eight motion between your thumb and your pinky finger. Leave enough line so that you can wrap the bundle and tie it off with one or two half hitches. Well folks, that's all for another video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you have, please like, subscribe, and share. You can also follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Now if you have any tips on how you like to set up your guy lines, please leave it in the comments below. It's always good to learn something new. Also, if you're interested in wildflowers and their historic uses, check out my website, plightthefreedom.com, where I've identified over 100 wildflowers and their historic medicinal and edible uses. Now, next week we're gonna get into elastic tensioners, so stay tuned for that. But until then, I hope to see you on the trail.